Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, my, my name is um, Jishala Chawala and I'm a pediatrician and I'm a lecturer at the University of Zenith School of Medicine and I'm based at the University of Zenith Hospital. I'm going to share with you the findings of uh, pharmacokinetics um, study, which was part of the SHINE um, randomized controlled trial. So the background to this study is that um, in 2010 and 2012, the WHO made revisions to the way children are dosed to the, to the drug susceptible PTV. So basically increased um, the rifampicin dosing by about 50 percent to about 15 milligrams per kilo, and isonazid by 100 percent from five milligrams per kilo to 10. And then they also made adjustments to the dosing of pyrazinamide and, and also recommended that rifampicin should be included in a pediatric regimen, especially in a child endemic setting. Now the problem with this uh, recommendation was that at the time of this recommendation, the FTCs that were the fixed child combination that were available in the market were of a ratio that could not able or enable from the programmatic point of view, made it difficult for this dosing to be realized. And therefore this um, was followed by the development of the new fixed dose combination drugs, which we're currently using in the country at the moment and have been, uh, um, have, they've been adopted um, globally and it has made it easy to recom to, uh, to, to implement this uh, dosing recommendation. Uh, we know that uh, TV dosing in children aims to achieve pharmacokinetic parameters that are seen in adults because when we are dosing children, we want to achieve serum drug concentrations that are seen in adults because these have been associated with uh, uh, bacterial killing, mycobacterial killing and treatment outcomes. And therefore the assumption is that if children achieve uh, serum drug concentration similar to adults, then their treatment is effective. So in this uh, pharmacokinetic study, we aimed to evaluate the pharmacokinetic profile of first line TB drugs in children who were dosed according to the WHO dosing recommendations and using the new fixed dose uh, combination drugs. So just briefly, the, the SHINE trial is a randomized control trial that uh, enrolled children who were below 16 years with non-severe TB and enrolled a total of 1,200 children. And these were randomized to receive four months of TB treatment or six months and then they were followed up for 18 months to see whether there was any differences between these two approaches. And within this trial, the clinical sites were at um, uh, in Cape Town, in South Africa, and in Saka, Zambia, Kampala, Uganda, and in China and Pune in India. And from a kinetic study that I'm reporting about based on children who were enrolled in Lusaka and in South Africa. So the method of this uh, study was as a nested PKT, uh, PK study in the SHINE trial. So children who were found with TB in this trial received TB treatment using the FTCs with additional thambotron. And then in the continuation phase, they used uh, rifampicin and isonazid. And the, the formulations that were used are those that have been widely adopted worldwide by McLeod Pharmaceuticals and the dosing profile was as recommended by WHO, which is a convenient dosing that shows an increment of one tablet according to each weight band. And then children who are about 25 kilo then are switched to adult formulations and they receive the dosing parameter similar to adults. And uh, once children were established on TB treatment for two weeks in this trial, then we then scheduled an intensive uh, PK sampling session where a child was briefly hospitalized into the hospital and had a, a, a blood draw, blood uh, samples drawn at pre-dose 
and then at one hour, two hours, four hours, eight hours, and up to 12 hours. And then the drug concentrations across these uh, time, um, these time uh, uh, timelines were then measured. The, the, the measurement of the drug samples was done at um, the University of Cape Town using liquid chromatograph from SPIC and then quality control on the samples that were used were validated by the University of Nijmegen in the Netherlands. And then uh, in terms of the pharmacokinetic analysis, we use what is called a compound metal analysis and now the primary measure was the area under the concentration curve at 24 hours. And this is just basically traces the change in the drug concentration over the time period, in this case, over 12 hours. And then we then use this um, area under the concentration curve for each of the four component drugs of the drug regime. And then we then compared this to what has been established as reference ranges for adults. So this is a summary of the participants that uh, were enrolled in the trial. In total, we had a total of 37 participants that were enrolled in this sub-study. 43 of them were Zambian children and 34 were South African children. And this was the profile of the children across the, the waiting bands that we were assessing. And overall, we had uh, um, the, 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 the median age of the children was around three years. Um, and then um, the males were slightly more than the females, a quarter were HIV positive. And in, ter in terms of the nutritional measure, the weight for age, the average weight for, for age Z score was one point, minus 1.5. And if you look at the dosing profiles of each of the drug over the four weight bands, you'll notice that most of the children achieved the recommended um, dosing profile for each drug. But when you compare with the children who were in the extremes of the weight bands, the one who were in the lower weight band and the upper weight band comparatively to the other children, their milligrams per kilo dose was lower than the, the children. And this uh, is the results of um, refampicin serum concentration. In this case, we're using the AUC for refampicin. So in this uh, profile, we had 77 children who had blood measurements done for refampicin drug levels. The vertical line shows the concentration of refampicin and the dotted line in the middle is the reference range is what the average, what we expected the children to have, on, uh, the, the, the serum concentration to be compared to that of adults. And each uh, of these vertical plot boxes represent the medians of each of the drug concentration per weight band. And the vertical profile on this side is the reference range that we use. So you will notice that if you look at uh, this line and how many children achieved this uh, line, you see that the children who were in the middle two weight bands had on average above the reference range that um, is recommended for this um, weight band. So they, they basically achieved, except that the, the children who are in the extreme weight bands comparatively had lower uh, concentrations than the ones in the middle weight band. And then if, when we looked at the isoniazid um, uh, drug concentrations, again, here we measured a total of 76 children. And for this, we had um, the re a reference band band of a lower reference limit and an upper of lower reference limit. And if, therefore, if the drug concentration was, was within the expected targets, we were expected that the concentration would fall within this um, band. And again, here you will notice that the children who were in the extreme weight bands, the ones who were in the first weight band below eight kilo and those above eight kilo had lower drug concentrations was the ones in the middle weight band at a normal concentration for isoniazid. And then when we looked at pyrazinamide, again, similar to the isoniazid, um, we had uh, an upper and a lower reference, and we expected that the children with a normal drug concentration will fall within this weight band. And here we will see that for pyrazinamide, generally most of the children 
achieved drug exposures that were within this um, expected um, recommended reference target. And then when we come to a thumbnail, here you will see that practically all the children we measured concentrations in 22 children and all of them had drug concentration that were below the target. So the conclusion from our study is that uh, using the current pediatric and adult FDC-based dosing recommendations, the exposures of the drug concentration was generally better than the ones before the revision of the dosing guidelines by the WHO. But however, children who weighed less than eight kilo and those who weighed above 25 kilo who were receiving a dosing similar to adults had lower drug exposures. And then rifampicin exposures were low in children who weighed below 12 kilo and above 20 kilo. And across the board, there were no exposures for the trumpeter, no weight bands that we measured. In general, there was an increase, improvement, or there was an increase in the dosing profile with increase in the weight band, except when we, we looked at children who were dosed according to the adult recommendations. And therefore, based on this, the study recommends that weight based um, weight band based dosing recommendation requires further optimization and we will combine this um, study with uh, this the findings from this study with other pediatric pk studies to then come up with what would be the optimal dosing recommendations that would then advise uh, programs on what would be the more the more optimum dosing weight bands that will achieve serum concentrations that are within the recommended targets. So the, the, the findings of this study were published in the Clinical Infectious Diseases Journal. And uh, those that are interested can uh, access this, this link. And uh, just to acknowledge all the institutions and um, colleagues that have um, inputted in this study across all the participating sites of the Shine Tribe. Thank you very much.